why are the reasons to do that analysis bit. And the moment you think you know it all, find a new field. You are okay exactly as you are right now. When you think back, are there some influential people? Oh, you? so many. There are so many saints who I have have gone before me. Um, who I am, who I am as a teacher, is a conglomeration of the people that I've learned from. Mm -hmm. And um, I think uh, maybe a, a brash way to say it is, that as musicians, we're always stealing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I don't think about it as stealing, really. I think about it as honoring mm -hmm. the all the amazing teachers I've had. And uh, by and large, I've had incredible forces in my life, mm -hmm. and still do. Mm -hmm. And I, I learn every day, and I hope that I'm never not learning. And if I'm done learning, I should probably think about doing something else. <laughs> <laughs> I think you need to constantly be thinking about, how do I learn? What am I learning? And, and I learn from everybody. I learn from the collaborators I work with. I learn from the students in my ensemble. They say things sometimes, and I think, oh my gosh, I've never considered it that way. I've never thought about it with that phrasing or with that, or in that light. Like, it just suddenly, like, whoa, wow. And um, that's an openness that I think, um, I think good music making requires that openness. Um, and I've been taught that and modeled that from so many important teachers in my life, um, many of whom are no longer with us, which um, is, is sad for me on the one hand, but also I think um, just in the way in which the great composers live on, in the ways in which we interpret and bring their works to life in our performances and recordings, I think the great teachers that we have had live on in the teaching that we do. Yeah. And um, I could probably take 20 minutes to name and list off the an enormous saints who've gone before me and taught me, mm -hmm. who I think about in every single rehearsal. And I think, how would so-and-so have done this? What would, you know, and and they are, they live on within me and mm -hmm. my teaching. And um, yeah, they, they truly serve to inspire me. Yeah, and do you um, do you think your conducting or teaching have changed at some point? Yes, I think so. Um, uh, early in my career, I I taught high school mm -hmm. right out of my undergraduate studies, and I started teaching high school at twenty one. I was very young, and I taught for five years. Wow! And I. I had lots of good thoughts and ideas, um, but I didn't know enough technically, I think, to, uh, um, so I needed to go back and do graduate study. And that was when, when I really encountered that was my fifth year teaching where I thought, oh gosh, I don't know how to take my choirs to the next level. And I don't know how to get this sound with my body physically as a conductor. How can I, how can I help uh, evoke this sound? from the singers I'm working with. So that was the inspiration for me to go back to school, uh, was that I needed to learn more. It's hard to imagine that you had that stage. Oh, no. no. <laughs> um, and I think that, I think that uh, how we encounter and work with teachers changes throughout our career. Um, and I was so grateful to have that pause from traditional education, where I was out in the world working with singers, learning with and uh, from the singers I was working, the students I was working with, mm -hmm. um, making lots of mistakes, mm -hmm. probably making more mistakes than I was doing things right, um, learning every day, and kind of, in a way, being my own teacher, being my own mentor. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we need to enter into that space where we leave traditional academia for a while, and especially if you are considering study uh, and higher education in music, I think it's very important at some stage in the journey to step away and be your own teacher for a while. I like to say to students who say to me all the time, I want to be a doctor in 
I want to get my doctorate in choral conducting and teach at the university level. And I want to do undergraduate and master's and doctoral studies, one, one, one. And I say, whoa, 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 think about it for a minute. And maybe at some point, if you're going to do all three degrees, maybe at some point you go out into the world and you spend time making music with musicians, learning from them and yourself mm -hmm. as much as you can. Mm -hmm. um, and I like to say at least three to five years, mm -hmm. I think is ideal. Um, and I was so grateful to have that five years where I stepped away. And that made my graduate education, when I did go on and do my master's and then my doctorate, all the richer because I had all this life experience that I could bring to the education that I was then getting. So I think who I was as a musician and as a conductor then and and now are are different, mm -hmm. have, have grown. And, um, and I'm a different person. I'm older. I'm not sure I would say wiser, but I'm, I'm more wiser. seasoned. I'm more, I've, I've lived more of my life. And I hope that 20, 30, 40 years from now, as I become more seasoned, mm -hmm. um, that I will be a different musician than I am now. Um, and that my music will continue to develop in ways that I cannot foresee now. I hope that I don't stagnate and change. And as I said before, if I do, I should consider doing something else. <laughs> um, because it's we need to constantly continue to grow and change. Yeah. And I think in that world, it's important for me to be in spaces mm -hmm. where I don't know anything about what's happening. Um, and to remember what it's like to be early on in one's journey. Mm -hmm. um, I've now been teaching. I've now been doing music and choral music. And I've been doing all of this for a long time. Um, but to find opportunities and experiences where you can try something entirely new and step into a world of, wow, I don't know anything. And I am I'm brand new at this. That, that reminder of the of the journey is so important and um, constantly trying to do uh, new and different things. Yeah. Yeah. Like I did with yoga, like I did with hiking, like I did when I became a runner and started running half marathons, like yes. they're all new parts of my journey. And I'm now thinking, what's next? What What is my next thing I'm looking into? Um, and I've got some goals and ideas of things I want to try and want to enter into that space and be brand new at and hopefully that newness of that art whatever it whatever it is i'm entering into will help make me a more well-rounded uh teacher musician conductor interpreter at the stuff that i've been doing for a long time oh that's awesome <laughs> yeah maybe japanese oh, i would love to go to japan <laughs> Oh, and I would love to learn to speak Japanese. Oh my goodness. Will you teach me? Sure. Sure. <laughs> oh, it's a long journey. <laughs> <laughs> no worry. You just go there, stay two weeks, and... And then it. I'll be fluent? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't think that's how it works, but... <laughs> I would love to go spend two weeks in Japan. Oh. Yeah, it'll be awesome. <laughs> yes. As you are doing one thing for so long, I'm sure there were times things didn't go as expected. Um, are there some moments you can share and um, advise here how you get over these moments? Mm. Yeah, I, 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 I'm absolutely not a perfect person. And I think we are all deeply flawed people. Um, and I, when I'm not settled and centered in myself, I often can... Uh, my expectations can go awry mm -hmm. and I can misjudge the way other people are encountering situations. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's very easy to enter into rehearsals in those spaces where the choir's not singing in tune and you think like, what's wrong with you? The notes are not right. The notes were right the last rehearsal. What's wrong with you? Why are you doing this? Mm -hmm. And then to take it personally. Mm -hmm. And then you enter into this sort of this, they're not doing what you want. You're getting angry. And therefore, they're responding to your anger, right? Like, and those spaces can be, and that can be in a one-on-one -on -one situation or in a group dynamic situation. Mm -hmm. uh, and usually, the heart of all that is a miscommunication. Mm -hmm. And it's just a, boo, 
stop, take a moment and think, what's going on? What's happening here? And if you really can step outside the situation and not let those negative emotions take over and increase the communication, um, and again, re uh, and, and usually in those scenarios where you're getting angry or hurt, we're locking down again, right? Um, and, and then nobody's learning and nobody's accessing, nobody's being musical. It's all just done out of a place of hurt. Um, and I, we've been in lots of those situations, uh, um, you know, and, and because expectations are not always met and difficulties do arise and we are human and we are flawed people. Um, but trying to always think, Ooh, can I pause? Can I? zoom out and think about what's actually going on here and how can I understand where my singers are, where the person who I'm having a conflict with is coming from, how can I see their perspective, how can I communicate my perspective. Um, and then if it's something that's not going right in a rehearsal, it's simply about, okay, this, these notes are not learned. We got to back up. Got to back up the truck, and this tuning's not going well. Why are the reasons to do that analysis bit mm -hmm. and to just back up and say, sometimes it comes out of, oh, I picked a piece that I should not have picked. Mm -hmm. That is too hard, and it's too hard, and therefore I'm getting angry that they're not doing it. They're getting angry at me, right? And like, rah, we're in a rough spot. It's a spiral. It's a, yeah, <laughs> a spiral of negativity. <laughs> And um, I think the wisdom to help that spiral stop and to pause, I mean, pause is so important um, and say, let's take a breath and try and wind backwards mm -hmm. and realize what the issues actually are and name them. And, um, and if, it's, if it comes down to, we thought we could do this piece and we really can't. And we're going to say, Blurp, nope, or we thought we were doing this piece a cappella, and we really can't. We really can't. The intonation is going to suffer too much, and it's too tricky, and the tessitura, the tenors are too high, whatever the issues are. Let's put this aside and come back to it. Or it's just a bad day, mm -hmm. and you're having a really rough day. You've had, you didn't do well on an exam or something that happened earlier. So I'm not going to go there. That you're in a raw space where you can't access what I'm asking you to access, then we're not going to go there. Mm -hmm. And um, that's so true with students who are constantly in this sort of stress cycle <laughs> um, and that need often a time to just stop and say, whoa, 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 slow down. Uh -huh. Maybe complete the stress cycle. And I think it's so important to acknowledge and consider how to do that and help to teach students that it's, Sometimes you just need a breath. Sometimes you need five minutes of meditation. Sometimes you need a really good hug. Sometimes you need just to remember you are okay exactly as you are right now. And not as who you're going to be and not as who you were, but in this very moment right now, you are okay and you are enough. And helping people and so I say these things all the time in ensembles, as you know, and I'm saying them to the musicians who I'm working with as much as I'm saying them to myself. And they're important to say and hear. And I like to be in spaces where other people can say these things. Mm -hmm. um, that uh, taking the moment to pause and lift each other up. Um, then when we come back to the tricky musical passage or the stuff that we're struggling with, mm -hmm. it sometimes often can feel a little lighter and a little like, oh, we actually can get through this and do this if we're not in that spiral, oh, that yes. downward spiral. Yeah. Yes. And I truly love how you are really watching all the singers. And remember when I was in TCC, there was maybe two weeks a piece didn't go as well. And you, I loved how you take a pause, you are like, everyone is doing great and we'll try this again and in the end of rehearsal you um we were talking but you stopped a girl and you said you are truly working hard 
and that words like meant so much to her. Mm. Like, I just love how you are treating each one and your words to them, and I can see their faces light up. And I'm, I, and I try, I try to do that, but I'm also aware that I'm probably missing as much as I'm catching. Do you know what I mean? That, that oh, we, oh, yes, yeah, yes. that it's in, in in a large group of people, it's impossible, and um, for the conductor to think, oh, I'm acknowledging and entering into everybody's headspace, like, and do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And actually, sort of dangerous mm-hmm. in a way to think, because that's almost like a, a, a you think you're like a god in the <laughs> rehearsal, and you, like, and I, I I'm super aware that no, oh, I'm not, <laughs> and. Um, I, I'm aware, I see, when I see things, I try and acknowledge them, but I also hope to speak to the student who's hiding mm-hmm. and not showing mm-hmm. or um, uh, not able to communicate the way in which they're feeling or doing on a section. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, and uh, yeah, those are some interesting thoughts. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mull that over some more. Okay. <laughs> And there are like good moments and bad moments and there are happy moments and sad moments. Like, are there some like sad moments in music making your career? And how would you digest like when you're really sad but not knowing how, what to do? Oh, I mean, there are sad moments in life. And I don't think I don't think there are sad moments in music making. I mean, there are there are hard moments in music making, mm-hmm. and there are moments that don't go well, and there are tensions and things that need to be worked out. But to me, those are not those are different from sad moments. Mm-hmm. And sad music, I think, the entering into that and the accessing of that while that is adjacent to sadness, Mm -hmm. is not sad. I think it's a different space. Mm -hmm. Um, And I talk to singers about that, that when when we're doing something that's really emotionally weighty and heavy, that there has to be, on some level, some sort of sense of distance, Mm -hmm. that we are entering into the space and honoring it and being with it, but we are not allowing ourselves to just do dwell in it or fall into it because we also have a job to do <laughs> and you know as singers you literally you can't be sobbing and singing right. you, like you can't do those two things at once yeah. um so when i think about the moments in my life that are the darkest mm. they're not around music making mm. that music making is is a thing of light even when we're doing dark stuff that is in, in accessing and being around that darkness and lifting it up and accessing that space, that that is a thing of light. Mm-hmm. Um, my darkest moments are usually alone mm-hmm. and usually when I'm trapped inside myself and mm-hmm. doubting myself and questioning myself. And again, that sort of sense of spiral, but internal, when I'm just sort of, I'm not enough. I don't, I'm not good at this. I, and when those things are going on, the, that's when I'm in my darkest moments, I think. Um, and I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunity to collaborate, because it often helps lift me out of that. Um, not always, but uh, in the best sense it does. Yeah, sometimes I think you need someone to just knock your door, like come out. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. And, and, and yeah, that's so important to me to just help remind people um, that I, I, you might be hurting inside. And I kind of like that in the academic process. I mean, I love teaching college and I love that upper adolescent level because these students are changing who, mm-hmm. as, as people, and as how they are entering and encountering the world, mm-hmm. is changing so rapidly around them mm-hmm. that they've been at home through their childhood with their parents and under, you know, um, with their parents helping guide them 
And now they're sort of off on their own and they're learning how to be in the world. Um, and that's a very tricky space to navigate. And then college is hard. There's so many academic demands. It's socially very hard. Um, it's how, how they're entering into that and helping them to navigate that while not, I'm not a counselor, I'm not their, I'm not their therapist. And I'm, I will say that all the time to students who come and see me one-on-one, -on -one, that I cannot be your counselor mm -hmm. and I cannot be your therapist. Mm -hmm. And you should probably seek a therapist and a counselor. And I truly believe in counseling. I think it's a fabulous thing and something we should all access. And, um, but I can help to remind them and help, I can accompany them on their journey. Mm -hmm. I'm a collaborative person <laughs> in that sense, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. And help them on their journey to realize and encounter who they are mm -hmm. and um, through music, mm -hmm. right? That, that the music is, I mean, I, uh, the music is, I guess at the end of the day, is not the main thing. Mm -hmm. It's it's the humanity. Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's the main thing. The music is the vessel, mm -hmm. is the way in which we get there. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it helps us think about who we are as humans. And that's what great, that's what great art should do, mm -hmm. I think, is um, help us think about our lives and how we fit. Yes. Yeah, I agree. I think make, music making itself is not like sad or something. It's always uplifting. Yeah. And I remember like when you had your anniversary last mm -hmm. year, in front of the um, choir, you said, I have to sing this song for the choir so I don't weep in the real event. And so the thing is, after Dr. Hayes' beautiful singing, the whole class was crying except for him. <laughs> like, so that was a beautiful moment. A little funny at the same time. Yes, right. <laughs> we were expecting you maybe you just cry a little bit because you say you want to practice, but you did not at all. You looked happy yeah. and content. We were, we were crying, yes. <laughs> yeah. And I did cry in the actual event. Oh, <laughs> so yeah. And uh, what are some very rewarding moments? <laughs> yeah, I uh, the rewarding moments are obviously the concerts, obviously the performances. Uh, I have colleagues who like to say, and I love this quote: um, the the concert is the celebration of the work that has happened. It's the party, mm -hmm. um, and concerts are also hard work. Mm -hmm. But it's it is the celebration of everything that is it's the culminating event, mm -hmm. and of course those those come to mind. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it's probably not my favorite moments. My favorite moments are the 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 smaller moments, the moments in rehearsal, the moments the unexpected mm -hmm. moments where there's a realization or where the choir suddenly makes a sound where every human soul is connected. And uh, and the voices lock together in a way where suddenly this harmony breaks forth. It's wow! What did we just do? And uh, and those are truly the the most amazing experiences. And my I think the choirs I work with tend to perform quite well mm -hmm. and tend to do really well in performance. Um, but those those moments of the small moments in the rehearsal room where something locks for the first time those are maybe my favorite yeah i remember when you did shalom with tcc it was an afternoon it was full and the sunlight comes through the window mm -hmm. you are conducting you are singing and that moment was like i, I won't forget oh. yes that's a beautiful piece of music. Mm. I still remember. <laughs> <laughs> and I will remember I think, for my life, mm. those moments. And I just love how you are creating all this with the choir. Yeah. yeah. And then 
I hope that you look forward to the next moment. Yes. And the, those moments that you can have with your choirs you work with, or one-on-one -on -one in a piano studio, or with a collaborative experience. Um, music, uh, uh, lots of musicians spend a lot of time alone in the practice room studying their art. And I have had a fair share of that in my development as a musician, but um, I've always become a better musician through my encounters with other souls. Um, and I learn more about how to be a musician myself when I collaborate with others, mm -hmm. in whatever way that is. And that can be conducting, singing, playing. You and I are playing a four-hand piano piece in this upcoming concert. Mm -hmm. And it's, I'm loving that. And I'm loving learning from that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and just the joy mm -hmm. of... Uh, we're very different people, but entering into that space where we're both playing the piano at the same time is is teaching me. It's teaching me too. Mm -hmm. Yes, and for future conductors or educators, um, what's your advice for them? My advice is stay humble mm -hmm. and remember that it's not about you. Ultimately, and as a young teacher, I, I didn't know this yet, necessarily. Um, it was all about my ego and about doing the hardest repertoire I possibly could so that I could look like an advanced conductor. Mm -hmm. I could look like somebody who is doing this important repertoire. Uh, and I learned that maybe that's not... It, it, probably the repertoire I was doing then wasn't developmentally most appropriate for my singers. I was doing it for other reasons, for reasons in serving myself. And that's a young teacher problem I think we can often have is that we want to prove ourselves and we want to, we want to uh, assert our authority as teachers, as pedagogues, as musicians, as conductors, as leaders. And we do it through, okay, I'm gonna do this important work so that everybody around me knows I'm good at what I do. <laughs> and um, to flip that around and think, well, yes, that's, yes, that all those things matter, but perhaps what matters is the people you are working with and the lifting them up and helping them on their journey, helping them develop skills where they can be, increase their musicianship, increase their musical skills, and have more likelihood of pursuing it through their whole lives. And most of the developmental choirs we work with are with younger people mm -hmm. who are going on to create lifelong music. Or if you're making music in the community sphere, or the church sphere, where you can often work with people who are in other phases in their life, thinking about what, have, what are the experiences that they've had so far through their life, that help them to encounter this music in new and different ways. Um, so that humility, I think, in, is so important for young conductors, uh, for all of us, for, regardless of what you do as a musician. Um, it's important to, yeah, remember there's, there's things to learn yet still. Yes. We don't, we don't have all the answers. <laughs> Think about something else too. So if, if there was like parallel words, world, what other dog case would be doing? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, gosh. I, um, I thought at one point in my life, many, many years ago, I might go into the ministry. Mm -hmm. And I thought about going to seminary mm -hmm. to study more. Mm -hmm. um, and I chose not to go down that road, mm -hmm. but um, I considered at the time, and I think this is still valid, mm -hmm. that that was a door that was open mm -hmm. that I did not walk through. Mm -hmm. I didn't close the door, mm -hmm. I just chose not to walk through it at that time. I so I don't, I, I like to think, although I'm now, you know, very middle-aged, I like to think I still don't know what I want to be when I grow up. 
I don't think anyone's old until 100. I mean, okay, right. And I love that, right? <laughs> uh, that I'm still trying to figure out what's next uh -huh. and what will I do? What will I do when I'm grown up? Uh -huh. uh, because I'm not, I don't feel that way yet. <laughs> I still feel like I'm growing up and developing. <laughs> um, so I don't know, I don't know what Dr. Hayes would do in another, in another parallel world. Maybe uh -huh. I, uh, one of my big inspirations and in teachers is the, television personality from back when I was a child, uh -huh. uh, Fred Rogers, mm -hmm. who had a show called Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood um, that uh, I, I, lots of young people don't know today because this was, uh, he's, he's passed away several years now. Um, but he, Fred Rogers was inspiring to me mm -hmm. in that he worked on public television mm -hmm. doing an entirely secular show. Mm -hmm. But he was sharing his belief in the message of what he learned in the Gospels and what he learned as a trained theologian mm -hmm. through the secular means. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't, he wasn't talking about God. Mm -hmm. He wasn't talking about Jesus. He was just living the Gospel. And I try, uh, in my best of times, I try to be inspired by that. That I don't have to talk about any of, it, of the religion mm -hmm. that's behind it, maybe, mm -hmm. that inspires me. And I, I have a very broad understanding of a spiritual practice in my head, but I'm inspired by lots of different sources. But all that's, in, all that's underneath it, mm -hmm. and the way in which I live it out, um, I think has to serve everybody who I come across, mm -hmm. regardless of their own belief system, and help them to encourage them to come into their own belief system, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. So there might be a possibility you have Dr. Hayes neighborhood in the future. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's everything about Dr. Hayes' career question. I'm sure it's only like this part of his oh career. <laughs> and thank you for watching and we'll come back to another session. See you all later.